Each month, myself and other Irrational Passions members will play through a new game. Modern to retro, obscure to popular. Games we've played before and those we haven't. We'll be hitting checkpoints as we go and discussing our experiences. Play along with us and join in the discussion. This is Video Game Book Club. Welcome back, everybody, to the final episode of Video Game Book Club's playthrough of Batman Arkham Asylum. I am once again joined by the young and ever so innocent Mr. Quinn. I wouldn't call myself innocent, for sure. The star of Irrational Passion's input podcast, George. <laughs> all right. Listen, we all know that's Jared Green. I'm not having yeah. everything there for a second. Uh, but uh, thank you. I I make do. I, you know, it's great to have someone like Logan uh, who can just, you know, I can be like second banana. We They're not on video Logan. game book, uh, book clubs, so you can yeah, count yourself. That. Never mind. I don't know who that is. What are you talking about? <laughs> You're the star. Well, Some guy star. from Texas. I don't know. <laughs> and the Destiny Guardian we all hope to be one day, Mr. Alex. How's it going? I would I would say if you asked anyone else here, they would not hope to be like me in any regard, whether it be a Destiny or otherwise. <laughs> but I appreciate the sentiment. I'm good. Wow, you guys are really up on yourselves. We have Jordan's hey, like, oh, no, I'm not really hey. this. No, I'm not. I mean, we yeah, you know, like, I don't here. know, man. Star, and then Alex is like, no, nobody wants to be like me. It's like, you no, fuck it. You guys are on video fun. game book club, so you are the stars tonight. Thank you, Scott. Man, Scott, Scott you're, you're you guys beautiful. are awesome. Don't worry. You you're guys are too. awesome. I got to hang but, out with Scott since the last time we did this. So it's true. It's been it's been a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, Batman man. is a video game. Batman, Batman. is a video game. Oh. Let's uh, let's kick things off with we arrive at the gardens. I should pick up Harley Quinn's trail in Batman I'm Arkham Asylum. Right. And, and so for some of us, this was sort of jarring yeah, because I had to remember to make note of like, okay, well, what happened last time? Because I think it's you and me, Scott. It's true. Who actually did that already? Oh, yeah. So we got to the original awesome. checkpoint. This is true. It was pretty yeah, deep in, though. I feel like I just did, I didn't want everything to be so middle loaded. You know what I mean? He tried that stuff on me, and I. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Mm hmm Because there isn't that much afterwards. No. Even the garden isn't too isn't that heavy, but like so we get to the gardens um, after where we were previously. Um, and we have to rescue some janitors. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Custodial workers. So, uh, like the normal sort of predator hunting and Batman beating up guys. Um, but the birdcage area where you have, we get to the wide open area in the gardens. Um, we have, cause we're still hunting Harley and the secret lab for the Titan serum. Um, and we've, we stumble upon this wide open area, like this whole tall cave almost. And there's these scientists or these uh, individuals locked in bird cages, and we are tasked with rescuing them without being detected. Otherwise, they get dropped and they get killed. So, mm -hmm. uh, what do you guys think about this part? It's cool because it's the first one because we we had one like this when you're trying to get the Gordon in the right before yeah. the Bane fight. Mm -hmm. But this is like the first one introduced after the collars are added to the kind of predator takedown repertoire. Uh, so I like that they, you know, like if the collar goes off, it means Batman's here and you can kill them. So it's like very much like you can't take out anybody along yep. the way. Um, I don't know. I think uh, there's one predator room in this last act that I really like, but I think all mm -hmm. the other ones are kind of weak comparatively. Yeah. Um, well, this one, I think it's the most interesting just because like you can't, you, you have to prioritize the guy in the control center before mm -hmm. you take yeah. out anybody else. Mm -hmm. All the others, like you can take down one and then get away, but with this one, you have to not confront anybody or even stealth take down anybody, which I think makes it much more interesting than any of the ones like you were saying, Alex. Yeah. Um, so I have a funny story with this like, this part of the game. So when I was replaying, when I was playing it. I got up to, you get to, up to the glass, right? And you're supposed to take down the guy below, then do everyone else stealthily. 
Um, except I didn't do that. I basically took out the guy loudly. <laughs> then nice. as everyone climbed up the ladders, I just threw batterings at them and then just beat them to death. That works, I guess. Yeah. It was funny. As long as you take the, the guy up top first. Yeah. Yeah, you then you can just go buck wild, man. For me, I thought I thought it was it, it was done pretty well, but with a lot of things in this game, like you can see the seams of hey, this is a video game as video game. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I could tell, like oh, this is designed. Like I I gotta take this route. I can't go. It, mm -hmm. it just seemed I it, I knew where the game wanted me to go to be successful and have the least uh, resistance or trouble getting this done. But I thought it was yeah. fine. I guess that's better than it being too obtuse. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I think I thought it was done well. Especially for the time. Like at the time I, I wasn't looking for those seams and they were those weren't so apparent to me. And for someone who's just playing a Batman game, uh yeah. they probably won't notice mm -hmm. it. It's it's one of those things too where like I I like Arkham Asylum because it is such a video game ass video game. Like for I sure. think I think it embraces that in a lot of ways where um so we've been talking about uh Spider Man a lot, um, which we, a lot of us have played or finished since uh, the last checkpoint uh and i think yeah like, this is the first checkpoint since spider-man has come out for people yeah. that are watching this later on in the yeah. future pretty serendipitous that yeah. we've been playing yeah. this game like on the lead up and then the after release it's cool yeah. because like obviously like i feel like insomniac spider-man would not exist without arkham asylum in a lot of ways um, <laughs> or at least it, it would not be mm -hmm. the same as it is but i think that game tends to like it is such a video game ass video game but it likes to pretend that it's not in a lot of cases that's just how it reads to me um where like the way the ways batman arkham asylum embraced that specifically like when we talked in the first checkpoint about uh that scene where you go in the door and like harley quinn's behind the gate and she's oh, like yeah. oh you can't come here yet and then you just like batman your way around it and it's like yeah this great kind of this is the Metroidvania part of it where it's saying like you can't access this area yet and then this is the Batman part of it where he figures out a way around it regardless. It's like mm -hmm. those those two concepts like meshing so perfectly. Um, but also like going off what you're saying, George, one of the reasons I like City and Night so much is because I feel like they help get away from those like path of least resistance encounters. Um, I think they they do it a little bit still, but I think especially in like the predator encounters, they, they really let you embrace um, doing things your own way. A little bit more at least. I completely agree. It's like in granted these aren't the games we're playing, but like with City and Night, I love the open world aspect. It definitely opened it up and gave you more options on how to tackle things. And I definitely appreciate um, what those go games did. And I'm right there with you. And I agree wholeheartedly that Spider-Man wouldn't exist without the Arkham series and what it did. Um, and honestly, some things are actually done that are like ripped, like pretty much blatantly from here. Well, not like as in like it's cheap, but like they definitely just got this from Batman. I think they're done better uh specifically and again i don't want to get too off track and talk about like this is Sp the spider-man podcast but uh the uh the sort of analog stick puzzles where you have to match the wavelengths yeah yeah uh, mm -hmm. i think it works so much better in batman because there's a one-to-one -one from from what you're doing you're like on the controller and what is being displayed on screen there's sort of a one-to-one -one connection because you can see yeah. batman move along with the thing and there's a connection there and i think it's still kind of cool it, it's always just a little bit cool every time like oh fuck man i'm batman i'm like hacking this thing yeah. i'm hacker man yeah uh, spider-man you don't have that context you sort of just it, it, and i think maybe that's why it feels so out of place in that game yeah 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 it just feels like a puzzle for a puzzle's sake yeah i still think it's weird how batman has to crouch every time he uses the uh yeah, that is true he doesn't know how to stand while the doing thing it. like when no i get it when people like enemies are around but when he's totally by himself like having to crouch and then bring the, it open it's like, the that thing, seems like, weird scott we don't see there's a lot of haptic feedback coming from his little hacker thing it's just vibrating so violently <laughs> he's got to like get his center of gravity uh, lower <laughs> he's got to bring it down <laughs> um yeah i don't I, I think that my thing is for us since this is like the last episode mm -hmm. of batman and this is kind of like our closer thing i feel like we should embrace like the the kind of talking more broadly about it yeah. as well and comparing it to to it, it's like very literal contemporary which is spider-man um mm -hmm. 
So, oh, for sure. Uh, so let's bust through the uh, the storyline, and then for the end of this, we'll talk about kind of our thoughts and do more of the comparison, uh, things like that. So we rescued the doctor or the individuals from the bird cages. We had to fight two Titan soldiers, and then all of a sudden, the Batwing comes in out of nowhere. Oh yeah, man! And we get the rope launcher. Great Actually, Batwing cameo. Let's let's talk. Let's go back to that Batwing moment, man. That moment I... is so good. What's up, Quinn? Yeah, what's up, so Quinn? I got something. So before we fight the two Titan guys, that's the first time we actually see Joker in the flesh. Oh yeah, I guess so, huh? Well, no, yeah, there's the we see him in the opening. This, this is the, the intro. It's, but it's the first been time a minute. We've seen him it's in been a while. Oh, but like since since then, that's you only see him like in the flesh three times. It's in the opening, it's in that part, and in the final part. Well, there's it. also right. the part right before this where he causes the um, he's got the electric pool between you and him, and you see him again. That's oh yeah, the first that's right. Time you see him, um, and but, then you're, you're right, Quinn. Like that's the first time like you see him. Yeah, um, and I agree what because ended up happening because I don't actually remember uh, that portion, like how you see him. He's um, you walk into a room uh, and there's like a big puddle, like not puddle, <laughs> like the room has been flooded and there's like staircases uh, down. And he's across is that the one where gap. the guards are like hanging and you had to like turn off the electricity? No, that was from last rescue checkpoint. Him. That's from last one. <laughs> that was from the last <laughs> last part of the game. This is right. Uh-huh. It's in the gardens. Um, yeah, which is probably because he kind of blows up it. the thing behind him. Yeah, and then he uh, he's holding a guard and he kicks him into the water and he gets electrified and yeah. dies. And then he walks through a hallway and blows up some explosives, and the uh, like, okay it collapses and covers the hallway. Then you have to go out, go back out, turn off the power to the that little electrified yeah. floor so you can walk through it, mm-hmm. and then you okay. eventually catch up with him. So, but Quinn, to your point. Uh, and maybe like your their little like observation has little holes, but I do agree that uh, because I saw that moment a while back ago, uh, and then the we next time it, I saw right, Joker George. was I couldn't uh, remember. It's like that was last time. Or yeah, that... but the next time I saw Joker was during that final time where he pops yeah. out of that hallway that you went earlier in the game. It was like, oh, you can't come here yet. It's not ready, Batman. And yeah. see, so like that moment, like there's something to that moment where he pops. Yeah. Well, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but he's there. And I don't know what it is, but because you just forget that he's an actual presence because he's just been around with you through TV or talking mm-hmm. or that little puppet, which gets introduced in this section. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's definitely something about the presence of the Joker. And I don't I can't really explain what it is because I don't really care about Batman that much. But it's just like, oh, man, like he's almost as like cool and mythical. Like he has that presence as much as Batman does. Like it's, that's yeah. the fucking Joker. <laughs> it's, if you if you didn't oh, yeah. like, if if this is like a Metroidvania style game, like you're weaving in and out of all these different buildings and all these places that he has been and his presence is felt in, but uh, and obviously he's talking to you the whole time, but you don't see him, um, and so that's like the first time you really see him. Then obviously you catch up to him in the the secret lab where he unleashes the, yeah. the Titan goons on you. And it's an interesting dynamic because at this point, and really through the whole game, like Joker knows what his plan is. So he's almost this ever-present, omniscient being that just eggs on Batman and like the quips and um, through the intercom system and with the TVs. It's an interesting dichotomy and interaction between the two of them, um, I found. Um, like, and like you were talking about how he's kind of always there, but at the same yeah. time, you never see him except for these very few specific moments in the game. Especially because, uh, um, like, he is obviously constantly talking to you, but Batman's very infrequently talking back mm-hmm. to him. So mm-hmm. all those times where Batman, like, actually, like, talks back to him. They're right. All, they're all great. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're all super good. <laughs> Like going back to the, 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 the like the Batwing like coming out of nowhere like yeah. it's such a it's again one of those moments like where you can tell that they really desperately wanted to get those things that were too big of scope for their game but they felt like it isn't Batman if we don't have this thing mm-hmm. uh, and it serves to give it a richness and it doesn't make it feel like again like. I understand this is just like a skybox and the island is here and, the, and then the yeah. rooms are compartmentalized. But yeah. I can see the skyline. The Batwing mm-hmm. came out. It feels like an actual place. It yeah. doesn't just feel like yeah. this little island thing. And it's just so goddamn good. Yeah. 
it's cool, but at the same time, like things like the Batwing, and later on, just the various gadgets in the back, the Batcave on the island, I feel like if they if the Batwing can just come and deliver like this the rope yeah. launcher and various things like that, it's like why do I have to walk I guess so. <laughs> from one building to the next or like it also at the same time takes away from it mm-hmm. and which is like if it's so easy for him to just dial it up and then it comes I guess and so. does a thing it's like why couldn't I would have rather had some other explanation be to why he gets that than the Batwing just suddenly like shoot down some glass and be there because mm-hmm. it's it got, t- got an answer for you what it's a video game <laughs> no no <laughs> exactly God. I I you got me. You got me good. Call no, it. but you're right. Like I, it's. I think they're like hoping you get lost in the moment, like I did, because I didn't yeah. think of that. I was just like, oh shit. And also, it's weird that this game, because I'm playing on PS3, so this game just feels retro to me. Like oh, I yeah. might as well be playing fucking mm-hmm. Super Mario Brothers. So when they did, it's like, wow, that's really impressive for the PlayStation. Man, I didn't see that coming at all. I didn't even have to load anything. You're, like you're just like forgetting yeah. everything the PS3 ever did. You're like, yeah, exactly. Wow, I can't believe this console's still breathing. <laughs> it's got 128 megabits of RAM. Uh, it's worth noting here because you did mention you're playing on PS3. I'm playing on an Xbox One X, and they like weirdly out of nowhere put out the the Xbox One X enhanced patch for this game. Yeah, I guess um, that paycheck. It's dropped. because they're um, watching video game book club. I, Alex, I thought like, that. Like, like, and people like, are playing this again. We got to release this. Like, for like, now we got to put that out. Deeply invested passions, in man. book club over here, which I <laughs> love. Virtuosos. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it it's weird because it like it's supposed to be like a 4K patch because that's the whole X's thing. But it, neither Arkham Asylum or Arkham City render in 4K. I think it's just like so it's 1080, right? It's still 1080. Um, I think uh, so. Arkham Asylum runs at. I don't want to say it's like a locked 60 FPS because it certainly wasn't at some points. Um, I think it fluctuates pretty evenly between 50 and 60. Just like I, I don't have like perfect eyes with that, but I, that from what I could tell. Um, but it ra- runs at the higher frame rate, and I'll tell you that fucking combat feels real good at 60 FPS. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Uh, just flashing. I know, like PC players, they they've already gotten that. Uh, huh. But it was it was like a nice little surprise when I went back to it. I was like, oh yeah, they did this. Uh, Digital Foundry shat all over it, but at least it runs a higher frame rate. Uh, I wonder if there's a if it's a thing with like Unreal Engine Four, so, because that because that remaster is on Unreal Engine Four, mm-hmm. and and this is just random me think because the last Remnant remastered mm-hmm. that you got announced is a thing that's happening yeah. it's nothing to do with this but that's also an unreal engine 4 and the footage that came out of that it looks kind of rough yeah so i don't know it's, it's weird Unreal Engine 4 rough engine yeah, yeah i feel like a lot of people have trouble with it um but i don't know to be fair like so many people are like way into unity now and that's, yeah there's a whole other conversation but mm-hmm. um i think it looks great like the anti-aliasing mm-hmm. is a bit sharper too so everything just tends to look sharp uh, and like the higher frame rate, the better performance. Uh, like when uh, we'll get to it in a little bit, but like when Croc jumps out of the water and grabs Scarecrow, I'm like, this looks fucking good. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I can't wait to play it on Switch. Oh, yeah, please bring it. Because, man, everything's going to Switch. It's got to happen. I like your true believing, Scott. I, I believe that. it, man. All I... the games from last gen, they're going to be on Switch. Um, so how did you, how did you guys feel about fighting the um, the Titan Serum guys? Because by my count, I believe we fought 360 of them in this last checkpoint of the game. <laughs> yes, I, oh, I hate these fights so much. I like jumping on them and then whacking on other dudes. Mm-hmm. That was pretty good. Um, they're just mini Bane fights. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's very, again, it's very video. It's very feels very like JRPG or like where like. The end. You see the old enemies, but they're they're super weak, and you're over leveled, so you just fucking wipe the floor with them. Yeah, yeah. And that kind of makes the that first boss fight where you learned all these basic mechanics, but it was really cool. Mm-hmm. That less meaningful a little bit. I was like, oh, you guys are just yeah. like fucking Bane, kind of. But I know because yeah. even before that, you fight the first kind of like failed Titan Serum guy. Oh right, and yeah. You catch up to Joker. Which is also like one of the times you see Joker in person. That's when he like rides off in the distance in the yeah. sunset. <laughs> and that's the last time you see him for forever. Um, it's like the Wicked Witch of the West. Exactly. He's just riding off on a broomstick. 
but uh, no, he's riding off on a cage, which is honestly way way more perfect. Yeah, for like a joking. giant cell or something. Yeah, through the uh, super max. Yeah, the super max cells. But like, that's when you fight like the half mutated Titan guy, and the fight isn't like working because he's like not working. <laughs> Um, but I like that, you know, the real Titan soldiers, you, you kind of get a feel for here. God, they're just so It builds gross. a bit, yeah. I love how gross mm -hmm. they are. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. All the bones, gross. like, in their spine, like, popping out of them, it, they are very gruesome. So and, gross. and all those looks painful. Oh, I know, right? Oh, Those guys are so painful. Up. And well, we'll get to it eventually, but yeah. I don't know if that translates to one of our key characters. <laughs> we'll get to it, though. Uh, so at this point we get yeah. our gadget, they get the, the neat gadget that makes us make a rope. I uh, thought this yeah. was a cool gadget. It's a cool really cool gadget. gadget. Batman derps pretty like the Batman model derps pretty hard when he's like zooming along it's on the rope launcher. <laughs> it's so bad. It's he so looks great. so derpy. Dude, he's like getting like he's pulling his whole lower body up into that thing though. He's getting yeah. crunches for days. Yeah, that is wild. That is true. <laughs> his abs must look perfect oh, yeah. after this game yeah. or it's like one arm because it's like rigid and it's just like dude that that man is holding his entire body up and crunching <laughs> with one arm on a like an unsteady rope i think we can give it to him okay and the yeah. rope doesn't even bend like it's just a straight shot it's like what's what's that rope made out of like carbon fiber it's, it's gotta be carbon fiber <laughs> like I'm, it i will out of say where too oh yeah, yeah. I will say about it though, it gives the game like a new verticality. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. you want to go back to oh that's how, again to the Metroidvania. Yeah. Like oh, oh yeah. and that, that's how I was supposed to get that Riddler trophy. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's neat again. Like it, it gives it like oh this it, it, this is even more open. It, um, but it, uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Quick George, note. Uh, so at this point we have to go outside. Like oh everything's all messed up because of the. Well, we have to meet Ivy. Right. Um, after we get the rope launcher, the main uh, that's the last thing we need to d get to be able to meet Ivy. And then she informs us that um, there's actually a cure to the Titan serum. And it just happens to be a really rare plant that can only be found in Croc's lair. Right. And that man's just like, go in your cell. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not yes. done, get when I come here. back, I'm going to take care of you. <laughs> oh, Batman. Oh, bad man. But yeah, you so get out of there and you have to go find cash, I believe, first, right? Yeah, you have to. Well, yeah, because you, you have to find to cash because Croc he cell. will have he has the information on how to get to okay. Croc's cell because we only know of the locked door near the bat cave at this point. Right. Yeah. And so we have to go back to the mansion where cash is to be like, hey, how do we get there? And so that's the point where I stopped because that's where I thought we were. But mm -hmm. then. I jumped back in after Spider-Man and I completely forgot I got the rope launcher thing. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I had like, how the fuck do I finish that? Cause you go to find cash and he's in this room, like separating you is this giant chasm yep. of toxic smoke. I was like, I don't, I don't fucking know what to do. And then yeah. I realized, Oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. I'll say there this. was a lot of okay. random snipers uh, yeah. that popped up too that shot me dead a number of times Old more snipers. often than I care to admit. Yeah. You were saying, Alex? Uh, when I played the game originally, I remember seeing like those big gaps and I'm like, I don't know how, I don't know how we're going to get out of this mm -hmm. one, Robin. Like, <laughs> what are we going to do? Uh, I was like, I, I, I was just excited to see how Batman was going to figure out how to just like. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to get something that let you like launch yourself and glide across those gaps like horizontally, <laughs> which would be really cool. Um, imagine in the like, sequel, yeah. Imagine like putting like explosive gel in your shoes and then blasting yourself off. Like how fucking badass that would be. That sounds kind of painful. Uh, yeah, I mean we find out. Sounds it's, very similar to the ending. But it's we'll very painful. I guess what made me think of it, but uh, I don't know. I was just excited when I got the rope launcher. Oh, yeah. I thought it was a really cool way to solve that problem mm -hmm. um also why are y'all calling it the rope launcher it's the line launcher oh excuse me <laughs> this carbon fiber rope line, the line launcher. i'll say like, like batman doesn't have shit. good names for his gadgets no he doesn't <laughs> no, like, he like doesn't. the ultra bat claw <laughs> i guess that's technically fox's fault because he's making this shit so. yeah he's giving it to batman 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 is the one paying the bills so he could name it whatever he wants it's true Let's man he's putting it in so. bank um, I thought the part where you have to go talk to Cash is like the most 
superfluous part of this entire game. <laughs> to be it fair, was it's, so it's, random. It's like the only time they make you do something like that. Uh, yeah, that doesn't like have course. any payoff, right? Like when you go no. and find um, the sharp, Quincy Sharp, and you have to go on that kind of goose chase. Mm-hmm. Like you get to take down Harley. You go through a lot of fights. You go through like the asylum part of everything, uh, the loony bin a lot, and like that introduces all these new Easter eggs and dynamics and everything. But like going and getting cash is like so pointless. <laughs> He's it's like, it's literally you go, yeah. you it's, say, it's "How do I get to Croc?" And it's like this is how. It's like. And then the new objective is like go to a different building. Yeah, like it, seriously, I spent all that time, especially me who didn't know how to get the fuck yeah. across. <laughs> George is freaking out, having an aneurysm, <laughs> trying to get across this gap. God damn it! I could have just gone to intensive care this whole time. Yeah. Couldn't My I mean is. they have radios? Batman, if he can detect whiskey on in the air, he I'm pretty sure he can get a radio frequency. Be like, <laughs> hey, Cash. How do I get to Croc? You know, just where to Croc at? <laughs> what were you gonna say, Quinn? I was gonna say the same thing as Scott. Is like, why doesn't he just tune it? If he has the Joker frequency for like his goons in his headset, mm-hmm. he can just get cash. Yeah, it's I've... probably not that hard. It shouldn't be that hard. Um, <laughs> no, it really shouldn't. Uh, but I don't know. We go to intensive care, and then we get the very exciting final scarecrow fight. Before that, we do get to, like the predator. We revisit that predator room, and the gargoyles oh, yeah. have bombs on mm-hmm. them again. Yeah, which again, yeah, gar- the gargoyles now have bombs on them, like you were saying, that explode, and mm-hmm. the Joker blows up one of his dudes, placing one of those bombs. It's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty pretty hardcore. Again, there's there's one predator challenge in like this last act that I'll mention when we get to it, but it was not this one <laughs> that I really liked. At least, um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I liked that. It's you know it's the same room that you had done a predator challenge in before, um, but yeah. they were like kind of spicing it up with with new mechanics and everything, and it was a lot harder. Like I'll say, like when you don't have that oh, yeah. on, it's a lot harder. Um, Scott. I remember with that one, I I took advantage of blasting through the ceiling a number of times more than I had previously. Mm-hmm. Um, Because there was, like, I believe this is the Predator section where you have, like, the center area, um, like, the center office or something, and they have, like, the two points where you can bust through the uh, the roof. roof. So I took advantage of my blast gel with those to take out a couple guys, because most of the guys also have guns at this point in this room, so you die really, really fast. Yeah. Um, Definitely one of... the more difficult predator rooms for sure at this point. I yeah. I didn't think it was that difficult because it the game just adapts. It, it tells you, it gives you all these tools and makes you think differently. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and that's something which I really liked about this fight is it's it's interesting to me that you guys found it to be harder when I found it to be I found myself to be more creative than I had prior. But that's yeah. also because. Stealth yeah. games are my thing. And I think yeah. I found it harder because I was coming back of such a, like, coming back of a bigger gap. Mm-hmm. So, like, because I already forgot the line thing. So at that point, I was like, well, what else did I forget? And so I kept trying to brute force my way through there. And I was like, all right, okay, I got to rethink this. And then, and then I got it. And I was like, this is actually pretty good. Uh, yeah. I don't know, like, because I'm with you, Quinn. I, I like, because you and I definitely love the stealth games, I, I would say, the mm-hmm. most here. Um, I don't know, Scott. You love Metal Gear Solid. You're in with us. Yeah. No, I completely <laughs> okay, agree. I don't it, like Metal Gear Solid. Let's, let's at this it. point, like you guys were saying, it made you re- have to really rethink. Yeah. How to tackle it more though, more so than the other Predator rooms. I feel because in the previous ones, I felt like you might have a guy or two that have a gun, but this one, it seemed like a lot of them had guns, so you really had to think creatively. Like it forced you to think creatively. Yeah, uh, and take advantage of, advantage more so than the previous ones, and I think that's why it was a bit. It was more difficult for me. I felt because I was, I was approaching it as I had the previous Predator, um, rooms. Yeah, and for me, I think that also comes from, like me, this whole time saying this is a video game and it's a video game, and so 
I'm not. I'm walking in not giving it as much credit. Like I'm. Mm-hmm. I. I'm not. Like this is gonna be easy. I'm just gonna go in. But at this point, I'm like, oh no, bitch, we flipped the script on you. And I was like, oh well, fuck. Okay, I guess I'll think rethink it. It's one of those things where, like, the way I played it, I I use those, um, different gargoyles as like the point where I, I I started and I would like scope out where I would want to use like. Oh, I can use explosive gel here. I can fall through the glass ceiling here and take somebody down. I can lure somebody to a corner take down here. I would use like that as it, where I kind of plan myself out. And without having like you, you suddenly don't have that top down perspective. Um, yeah, that's that was mm-hmm. like the the specific part of the challenge that I face. But mm-hmm. like, because I always like to try and mix it up, and you get that variation bonus at the mm-hmm. end. And if you play like the challenge rooms, like I did, and I, I kind of talked about this last week, like they have you do different kinds of takedowns and like kill two or take down two guards with an exploding wall uh with explosive yell or something like that so uh yeah. they they definitely if you like how it challenges you to do different things you would like the predator challenge rooms in the extra mm-hmm. i'll say that much um I'm, i am gonna say too because i know scott you mentioned the little center office room mm-hmm. and alex you talked about like using the gargoyles to get a lay of the land um what I did in this scene is I basically used, I just basically grappled up to one gargoyle, which was corrupted basically under that center thing. And I just used that to be like, okay, this is what I can do. And since I used the gargoyle to explode, the guards were already set off. So I can kind of like use that, their manicness to my advantage and take them down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But That's some fucking oh no. 3D chess shit. Some 3D chests. It's that Kingdom Hearts trailer all over again, George. Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> we can't we can't go down this road because okay. we both know right. Alex. We are going to if we start down we're the Kingdom Hearts crying. discussion talk, <laughs> we're gonna start crying and this will turn into Kingdom Hearts trailer breakdown. <laughs> Our breakdown video. <laughs> Our breakdown video. Um I, but yeah, so we get into the uh, the scarecrow fight. Yeah. But uh, sorry, go ahead. Alex. That, I was gonna say I really like the scarecrow fight. <laughs> I actually want to talk something a cool detail about this, like the cutscene. Yeah, all um, you do. I, I don't know if y'all noticed this, but I did. Um, because when you die the first, because I died, I didn't know like what to do. Like when you're getting rolled through, you the have scarecrow to die. thing, and you're that's like, on yeah, you on have to purpose. die. I tried skipping that scene. So I was like, I was mashing X or whatever. Then if you don't, if you notice, it says skip a circle. It's purple and it says J in it. Oh, so I did like see it's that. Telling you, you can't, you can't skip a scene. That's cool. Interesting. My, oh, okay. This was when is... they were replaying the intro cutscene, but with the roles of Batman and Joker right. reverse. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I totally forgot about yeah. that, by the way. That it's, was a very cool touch. The note cool. I wrote down is so when you when Joker shoots you and it goes to like the the retry screen, mm-hmm. it's the the tooltip is use the middle stick to dodge Joker's gunfire. It's a really good. Bit. <laughs> it's a really oh yeah, good. that is good. It's like middle stick. <laughs> Are you talking like the yeah, middle, like the touchpad? It's what? really funny. It's still really funny. Like yeah. <laughs> um, no, it was good. What's the middle stick? There's a left and right. There's none. That's the joke. I know. Uh, it's very good. It's very good. I you know, it's also. Like when you go into that scene and it, like the the TV cuts out and the game freezes mm-hmm. and everything, it's like it, it's one of those things. Like talking about Spider Man not existing without Batman, I feel like this scene wouldn't exist without Metal Gear Solid. Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, hundred percent. And it's like I don't know. It's so awesome to see that specific Kojima influence because like I. Mm-hmm. There are not a lot of games that do stuff like this. It's like Eternal Darkness. Yeah, Eternal Darkness. Metal Gear Solid. Never played that game. Uh, I've never played it either. I just know near like near, near. Uh, the original near um, and automata. Automata, bit. yeah, you're right. Um, and the the PT demo. <laughs> it's like you yeah. know, it's like five games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and really, it's kind of they never kind of revisited this. No, ever. they no. didn't abuse it. Like they they did just enough with like the weird game breaking, um, and it all like mm-hmm. it it plays out in the span of about five minutes. Like I was worried that going through that intro again would take a long time, but it's it's like very truncated. It's very well done. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it's just tight. It goes from like you're walking down the hallway, Batman coughs, the screen cuts out, 
the the whole replaying of the cutscene yep. with mm-hmm. Batman freaking out. Um, mm-hmm. It's all all cool little touches, and then all the guards and like Saz is the one dragging Batman through it, and you can see like Quincy Sharp and Cash and all that being dragged off to be shot outside on the other side. Batman doesn't have his cape. Batman doesn't have his cape, which is weird. Um, right. And then you see all like the other crazy Batmans eating the rats and everything. Uh, yeah, that was right. very interesting. That was yeah, that was. It, again, it was hearing Kevin Conroy not in his gravelly Batman voice, <laughs> yeah, like super screaming, weird. was unnerving to me. Arr, arr, arr. Yeah, and also like again, him yelling and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Can I, can I interject? Yeah, go ahead, Quinn. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, when the screen went out. I was legitimately worried because I paid a good amount for my TV, <laughs> so I thought something was fucking wrong. Yeah, it's a good feeling, dude. It's, it's you good. done fell for it. Yeah, that is I pretty good. Uh, again, like I think we, t- I can't, I mentioned again because I keep thinking about like how the development of this game could have been, uh, mm-hmm. and I wonder like how much. Okay, we're gonna have these three big like we have the opportunity with Scarecrow to really fuck with things. Like we have yeah. this moment, this moment, and this moment uh and we need to lead up to them and like figure out when mm-hmm. it, they're, just, they're just so imaginative they're so cool yep. they're so unexpected uh and it, this was at a point because i was like uh scott i don't know if we mentioned it but like coming back from spider-man i think we mentioned it like it was really rough uh yeah and so like, i was kind of bummed out i was like ah fucking batman but then that moment hits mm-hmm. and like oh, this game is is full of surprises and then that was man because i totally i totally yeah. forgot about that part. yeah it's awesome. I think this is definitely a well done segment um, with the glitch and everything like that. Um, he, Batman still has to fight more skeletons. Oh, so yeah, I do kind of wish they changed up a bit. I like that the scarecrow's how... juicing though. He's yeah. juicing to get like more yeah. spooky. Oh <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. so great. Um, I do wish they had changed up each of the skel- or scarecrow portions a bit, mm-hmm. so it wasn't just running through avoiding his his eyesight or like his view. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it was very cool. The lead, I I always enjoyed the lead up to the scarecrow segments more than the actual like scarecrow segments. Yeah, I will say so. Like, it, if you look at them as like all three different parts of Batman's psyche too, like. I love that they're they're the tentpole three fears that he has had. Like it's mm-hmm. the fear of failure, right? When Gordon dies and he can't save mm-hmm. him in the beginning, uh, it's it's the fear that he felt that made him who he is when his parents died, and then it's the fear that he is so close to the edge that he'll eventually fall over. Um, yeah, and, and yeah. himself will become in- insane, and it's like they're all different things that each of like these intro segments to each of the scarecrow mm-hmm. segments address and try and confront uh and i think they're all just they it gives you a real clear image of like what rocksteady views as like the core tenets of batman yeah Uh, and they're all portrayed and done just so so well i I oh completely agree i really love it and i think it also if you're young and this is like maybe your first big batman thing maybe you never saw maybe you saw a movie once or twice like they're able to give the richness of the character and what's pretty much just an action game because the game, like the game, is pretty much beating up, beating up, beating up. I'm cold. I'm Batman, and these moments allow that that weakness and those fears to give him that richness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, the humanity to tell you about Bruce and like the things that kind of drive him. Yeah. So, I, which I guess this kind of was for you, Quinn. Yeah, it was because like when I was. This game came out like what? 2010? 2009. 2009. It's almost 11. a decade old. <laughs> you were 11. <laughs> That's crazy to think. Yeah, I was 11, so like the only Batman I knew was Batman 89. I I knew the Tim Burton Batmans, and I knew the first um, the first uh, Nolan Batman. Okay. Like that's my only reference for Batman at that point. And I loved the Tim Burton Batman's a lot because mm-hmm. Michael Keaton is the best Batman. I'm not going to debate that. Um, but seeing like playing a Batman game was like whoa. So yeah, I don't, like cool. how do you feel about? Because I guess you probably have you gotten into the animated series since then. I have. I I watched the animated series. My dad um, put them on VHSs. Yeah, nice. You mentioned this. Nice. Uh, yeah. yeah. My, I'm not gonna yeah, say because, 
this was I love the my first, dad. <laughs> it was mentioned in the first He's episode because shit, yes. uh, Quinn's dad also pirated a copy of Arkham Asylum. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. He pirated it. You're a dirty thief. He uh, got it through a way, which I'm not proud of. <laughs> uh, no, I, I like. I think that's cool. And yeah. that, like, obviously, Keaton's Batman and the Tim Burton Batman is one thing. Nolan's Batman is another. And I think Conroy's Batman which is my favorite Con- Batman. Conroy yeah. and Hamill are my Batman and Joker. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like For I, me. I love... I also love him kind of like jumping into this character and this story too. It's just very mm-hmm. cool. Um, mm-hmm. But then uh, you've chased yeah. uh, Scarecrow and he gets fucking murked by Croc. Yeah, he... Oh my is, God. He, so and, like, he keeps jabbing and injecting Batman with the fear toxin and Batman eventually shrugs it off after shining three uh bats uh, bat symbols bat, light, bat signals at the scarecrow so scarecrow runs off and escapes down the uh the elevator to get down to croc's lair where he's going to drop fear toxin into the like the sewer supply or like the water supply to spread the spear, fear toxin into the water supply of gotham and Croc's like, I'm not having that. So he jumps out of the water and basically just owns owns Scarecrow so hard and drags him down into the water. Yeah, dude. What a way to go. So good. <laughs> it's I, so I unexpected. Yes, Quinn. How rusty are Scarecrow's needles? I don't know. They look real gross, though. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Really he is, he is not, like, replaced those as he should after use. I don't know. They might be pretty clean because he's probably refashioned his needles or like his glove out of the needles at Arkham. So they might be like fresh, fresh ish, needles, fresh ish, fresh ish. I don't. Do you want to use fresh ish needles? Fresh ish. Uh, I don't know, man. Fresh ish is. You're screwed enough. either way, but at this point, tetanus or fear toxin is like which. Yeah. Which is the worst of two evils? Have tetanus, thank you. <laughs> so we're finding the antidote. We we're finding the antidote. How do you guys mm-hmm. feel about the Killer Croc section? This I don't like it. <laughs> replaying it, it was like so monotonous and boring and underwhelming. Really? Okay, George. What about you? I see you thinking. I think it start. I think this the uh, when you're making your way to, to collect them. I think it's fine. Uh, it's still like it's video gamey, right? But I think really. It's, uh, annoying uh and then coming the way back that's the part i had trouble with uh but after a while i realized though it's just a pattern uh, and then i got through it yeah. yeah i think it's fine it's it can be i was really, at the time i was really frustrated with it but uh, i'm trying to think of like that's prop if i was in the design room that's probably how i'd do it mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah, it's, it's fine. I think. Yeah, I figured like you would like it, Quinn, because I know you don't like spooky stuff. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, I have a funny memory of this. Okay. So, back when I was playing it on a PC, mm-hmm. back when my dad got the copy. Yeah. Um, it was me and my brother just huddled around the, the like the single monitor that we had for the game. Then at, every time Croc showed up, it scared the living fuck out of us. <laughs> <laughs> like me and my brother like mm-hmm. paused the game and like ran out of the room because you're just so fucking scared. <laughs> I mean, but playing it now is like, eh, it's not that scary. I like, I I relate yeah. to that though because I remember when I first played it, like Croc jumps out and I just fucking run yeah. out the room as Batman. <laughs> like I just turn yeah. around and go yeah. back. <laughs> I remember it being much scarier and much more tense the mm-hmm. first time I played it than I played it this time. I so like. This is not the the second or third even time I've played this. Probably the fourth or fifth. I I really like this section, uh, and it's it's the video game part of it that I don't like, where you have to like I have to get like six whole six or like seven of this. Like, if, why is it, why can't it, if it was like three? I feel like it'd be so much more tolerable. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is. I like the way they are presenting. A Batman villain that is like beyond his capability in a lot of ways. Yeah, like yeah, because, that he can't take on one v one. Yeah, like this isn't a fight that you can just get in and win, especially like when you're in his territory. So it's it's everything about how this scene is set up. Like when Batman places the sonar thing, and you don't mm-hmm. quite know what that's for quite yet, and then he plays yeah. the trap, and then he goes into the lair. You're like, 
Batman's already fucking ready. Whatever's going on, mm-hmm. like I don't necessarily know what Batman's plan is, and I like that the player isn't always kind of keyed into that, but he's ready for it, and that makes me more confident going into here. Um, yeah. But it's also like, it's the the sense that even Batman is maybe a little tense here, right? That's like that's the yeah. feel. All of the different things happening around it, like Batman having to prepare a lot more than he has for other fights and things like that, like. Even Batman's maybe a little unsteady about this. Uh, and, yeah. like, obviously mm-hmm. his confidence is unwavering um, externally, but, like, you you kind of get a sense of that. And it's just, like, the portrayal of this villain that is so beyond your capability than anything else you fought in this entire island. Like, even Poison Ivy, you're going up and fucking punching her plant monster things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But this is a thing that you have to be smart about. And it's just, like, the tactile nature, or not tactile, but, like, the the tactics that Batman employed to do yeah. this, like, mm-hmm. it, it sets it up as such, like, a big deal. Um, and it's just, like, you go from the scale of, like, fighting Bane, who is, like, larger than life in a lot of ways, but you still just kind of punch him a lot, to, like, Croc. Right, yeah. And, like, he's thinking outside the box, and he's approaching this very carefully. And it's, it's just, it just like you were saying, George, with, like, the the kind of Batwing moment and how rich that was for you. Like this enriched the, the very huge mm-hmm. gulf between the Batman villains for me. Like Croc is, mm-hmm. he has to be dealt with in a very specific way. And you have to be very careful about what you're doing with it or else you're going to get killed. Um, right. And I, I really liked yeah. all the little touches that kind of set up this scene. Yeah. yeah I, I went in going I was actually go because I think like a lot of people uh don't look fondly in this but I was actually going into it positively it started off well because I think I remember it sort of how you feel Alex like mm-hmm. this is killer croc uh and you're you're in his territory and you can't just punch him you can't just beat him up this isn't gonna be mm-hmm. a bane fight again uh but this I, I, I did I, this time I went in so I think I, I want this to work for me mm-hmm. and it, I guess it worked for the first part, I think you do have to collect way too many of them. Yeah. But it feels uneasy. But then going back to going back, uh, I just died too many times and it was frustrated mm-hmm. uh, too many times and I just want I just left a bad taste in my mouth. I got you. I luckily got through it without too many issues. So yeah, like you were saying though, Alex, I love like the him having to prepare and not being overly confident. Batman, um, I'm speaking about was yeah. even apparent like right at the beginning with the dialogue because when he's talking to Barbara in all the other conversations he's like Joker will not win he will not do this I will do this but with Killer Croc Barbara was like this is really dangerous are you sure you want to do this Batman was like I don't have a choice <laughs> yeah. you know it wasn't that it's going to happen regardless I'm going to he can't do this it was just like I don't have a choice like I have to go into these sewers the lair of this beast to handle um in regards to the killer croc I wish like I love sneaking around I love how you had to kind of keep quiet so he wouldn't detect you my main complaint though besides the having to collect like six or whatever pods for the antidote I wish dealing with Croc when he did find you uh, involved more than just throwing a battering at yeah, his face. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Because literally yeah. all it was is like, I walk or run the entire way and then, oh, I hear the audio cue. I turn the camera quickly around and then I tap L2 and then it's like, okay, it's done. Mm-hmm. If, um, there were, if there was something like where you like shot a bat claw and maybe pulled something out and it hit him. Yeah. Right, or like had like a bunch of different varieties. Like maybe this time you had to quickly use the bat, the gel to blow something away so he would knock in or use the bat claw or use this. Yeah. So you had to like think on the fly and the fact that he's charging at you would have more of an impact. I think that would have been much stronger for me than just... Yeah. And because yeah. you don't have to target, it's just a quick double tap of the L2 button, and then it's like you're safe. I had to target every time, so I was doing something yeah, same. Wrong, though. <laughs> yeah, I was a little bitch, though. and I was just in battering pose the whole time. <laughs> you're just yeah. like, oh, I got you, Croc. <laughs> but I guess, Croc. It takes away a little bit from the mysticism. And also, I think <laughs> we do get uh, that sense of dread because it did such a good job of 
you know, like, oh, Killer Croc, he's in the beginning. Killer yeah. Croc, mm -hmm. he's in the middle. When you walk past that one section, you can see him yep. in the glass. Yeah. And then you finally get mm -hmm. to him. And it's like, oh, Jesus. I just have to chuck a batarang in his face and he goes down for a while. Ah! And man, my dog did not like that music. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it's just the thing of like no other, just kind of like the Joker, or not mm -hmm. Joker, um, the uh, Scarecrow sections, like no other part of the game is like this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Where there are a lot of similar to each other parts of the game, which isn't right. bad necessarily. It's just like the yeah. setup, the execution, what you do, and every part of it. Everything is unique to this Killer Croc section. Yeah. Um, it just gives it that kind of like polished video game feel to me. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I was like way into like the mythos, the mysticism of it. Um, so it, it really worked for me this time just mm -hmm. because of how different it was. Yeah, I, I love the concept and I love the like the audio track and having to kind of sneak around. I just wish it was a bit more challenging to knock Croc off your trail for a bit yeah. than just so, throwing a battering at him. You run away, play some Crash Bandicoot, yep. and the blow you, up. You cut down some, uh, you cut them down some plants. You do play some Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> the boulder's you coming for you. Fruit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you blow up a big, a big bat gel. How'd you feel about the big? I know you love the explosive gel, George. How'd you feel about this big explosive gel symbol? Oh yeah, it. it I, I liked it a lot. <laughs> I know you did because mm -hmm. I liked it a lot too. <laughs> it's really cool. Honestly, the explosive gel. Like every time, like he uses it in a fun way. It's like the coolest shit. Oh man, that was the end cool. of this we'll get to the ending. Fucking again. good for you. <laughs> <laughs> that was really, really cool, though. I have, like, yeah, I have to too. say, like, having Croc charge at you and you yeah. had to remember that you, like, in a cutscene, had placed the explosive. Oh, gel. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, crap. It was like, okay, I got a hot key. What's the hot key for explosive gel? Yeah. That was that that was really handled well. Just gets tumbling down, cool. too. And he's like, yeah, I'll get you for this. It's so good. <laughs> and so after this, we got to go to those two pumps sections right well Those before two. this we have to go we're going to the bat cave because we oh, have the right, right, antidote right. yeah so and we, we get unlock the, the door to and i had an issue with this mm -hmm. so this door that's sealed in croc batman just opens up willy-nilly he's got croc he, is still around so what's stopping croc from getting out here's the thing he's yeah. got the mayor's code he's got quincy sharp's codes now all doors mean nothing to batman <laughs> No, but he. But it's, it's but those doors didn't like, use the codes. I'm just, I'm just it's, saying some shit. It's just right a now. blast door. I don't know. And Batman was just like, oh, I'm gonna walk out and go to my back cave. It's like, oh, it was actually, about? it was just a little bit of gum in the yeah. in the lock thing, and he just took it out. And you had a point. I'm gonna just say something real quick. Yeah. Um, it's it. I just, I just realized it. It bothers me that Batman pushes these blast doors when you have to like fully unlike do a to, lot of things to get through them. The thing and like. They un unlatch and come open. And he's just like, that yeah. is really no, strong, Quinn. You Batman just, doesn't like, give a fuck. Move a thing and push it. But. It look they look like the ones with like the, like the submarine, thing on it. I yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what they look like, but, uh, yeah, Batman he's very strong, uh, and he just opens them. <laughs> those those doors are hermetically sealed. <laughs> <laughs> very strong. So the Batcave gets fucked oh, yeah. up, right? <laughs> Well, we get the attacks. ultra grapple. Yeah, yeah. I like that Which, Batman just like. Why just... didn't Batman get this the first no, time know. he was it's, in the back it's, cave? It's dumb. He it's... just throws some shit on his back claw. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> "This looks like some garbage. I guess I'll just throw this garbage on here, and it works now." <laughs> yeah. I fire three. I fi I fire three. Uh, three lines now, just because. Because why not? For the lols. You can tear down it's walls so... now. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have that moment where you gotta fly around the island a little bit. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. Got the vines take over the Bat Cave, and Batman has to use his Ultra Grapple to pull down a wall that he just didn't demolish when he built the Bat Cave for some reason. I will say I like the part where he goes into like the the just like the cave room, and it just looks like nothing, and then like scans him and lets him in. Yeah, I was like, okay, at least yep. he thought about this. I also like that it just looked like a totally unassuming cave. Remember, right. he just moved that in one day. Exactly. Yeah. Mm, I'm try to kill and no one knew about it, apparently. He made this fake boulder door. <laughs> yeah. He no, made two so fake boulder doors. Fake. Yeah. It's... He made two of those. It was convincing. It was oh, a definitely. convincing boulder door. It okay, good... it's weird that you walk into a cave and it ends and it's like 
That's all caves. Towards you. All caves end. I played that Spelunky. I got to five dash four. They end. <laughs> all caves. <laughs> okay, Alex. I'll tell you about my. So this part. So we we fly around, no. and this yeah. is how do we get to the pump section thing? No, we go back I... to the gardens because now we have the antidote, which we uh... have to inject into our Ivy, who is back in the garden. So we have to now go back to the garden you go back to the under underbelly though of like when you fly around we were talking about george you fly around and then you go back up and you basically pop out to the other entrance to the back cave and then you go up through the yeah. same uh mm -hmm. entrance that you oh did before. yeah okay yep. but there's yep. like the, a, an the open ruins. door now you go through the ruins if i remember yeah, yeah the ruins of old arkham yeah. oh, that's a fun part of the game uh, all the way up and then you go yeah you go up to that that section and then there's that moment like because it's pretty quickly after you've gotten that ultra claw that the three dudes are standing on the mm -hmm. ledge oh like, yeah pumping yeah. their fists and you can pull all three of them down it's yeah. really good <laughs> that was good um but yeah then he, the reason i wanted to do this it's a you know it's just another series of predator and combat sections but like uh the predator section in here was the one that i really liked um it's like it's when you're shutting down all the different pumps um, because Joker's like suddenly just trying to spread Titan throughout Gotham. Everyone's trying to fuck up the Gotham water supply. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> like, it's a real problem. I guess that's the weak point. You know, it's the plot of the Dark Knight as well, or Batman Begins yeah. as well. It's really bad. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, but, um, you, uh, it's like a, it's, the room is kind of like a boomerang shape. Um, mm -hmm. and like the, the pump door is on the right side. Uh, and you have to it's it's very like tall as well and you have like a lot of different options as far as like walls that you can blow up it's the f only predator section where there's like a wall that you can actually pull down with the ultra bat yeah. claw and knock out uh, dudes as well mm -hmm. um i don't know i really like all the different options you have in that in that room there's a lot of good duct work like being able there's a lot of good areas um hidden behind the the ducts that you can get behind that's how i did yeah. that part I snuck behind a bunch. And there's like, what is it, seven or eight guys with guns? Somewhere about there. It's a, it's a few. It's a, it's yeah. a tougher part. That took me in a few tries to, uh, to get through. Yeah, I believe I reset it just because I wanted to do it like pretty well. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I wanted to explode the right thing and set off. Have like this chain of events because when I first did it, I was like, book wild. Yeah. And I was like, okay, now actually I have to think about this and do a chain of events in my mind. It's the it's the last predator challenge in the challenge rooms, because mm -hmm. uh, there's like a normal version that, that might be Arkham City actually, but it's it's like the hardest one and like the things yeah. you actually have to do in it are really tough. Um, mm -hmm. It's really cool though. I like at that point I had unlocked the Sonic Batarang. I don't know if you guys got that, so you could kind of lure guards into spots where you could set off explosive gel and things like that. So I don't think I did. No, so I invested out. a lot in health and then um into my combos and being able to do the auto takedowns yeah the auto takedowns is clutch now i remember that's the first room you go into i don't remember the second one being as good as that first one no the no. other the second one was just like you it's had battery, yeah know? four or five guys that you just had to yeah. take out it was yeah. it was really the guy tied up on the chair easy. yeah yeah <laughs> um and then you get like the big elevator scene where the elevators are bringing down more and more guys yeah, i actually yeah. really like that scene <laughs> so. great um I did not like that combat encounter. Yeah, no, good shit. I liked it. That was right. I, I'm pretty sure that was the moment when I originally played this game, and I was like, all right, I'm fucking done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, fair enough. This uh, is also George that hated the combat at that point. Uh, but Are you more into it now? I feel like we didn't really address that. Yeah, so uh, you meant, you had a moment where you described why you liked it, Alex. Like, you, which is weird because you you like the rhythm of the, you, and you're a person who does not like rhythm things because you yeah. don't have any according have, to you. I don't have rhythm, yet. but like the thing is, it's you make the rhythm of this combat, right? It's not right, yeah, dedicated, right? Yeah, and once I, again, I don't know why. I think ever since when this game came out, from the background of like. Even the Treyarch and the first Treyarch and Never Saw Spider Man games, like they mm -hmm. had combos, they had move sets. This game doesn't have move sets. Mm -hmm. So coming from that background yeah. and the background of like character action games like Devil May Cry, I just thought I was like, this is fucking what is this? This is the weakest shit. Uh, but then when I thought about it that way, and, and not only that, but you can't if you want to, you can just button master it and it feels mushy and bad and not good. Yeah. 
And that's what I did. And yeah. so I was like, this combat sucks. Why is everyone so crazy about it? And now when I think about once I got the rhythm, I was like, oh, okay. I don't know why I never connected these dots, but now I can totally see why someone would like this combat. Yeah, it, and like you guys were telling me, like mm -hmm. going from Spider-Man to this, and I really like the Spider-Man combat. Don't get me wrong. It's just I because I've put so much time into Batman combat, like it, it just it is really special to me. Um, like I said last episode, uh, it's just like don't button mm -hmm. mash, just like tap yeah. with every hit, and you will you will really start to feel every hit, and you'll get the rhythm of. Well, now I every time you mm. successfully land a hit, you you kind of have a moment to decide what you want to do next, and sometimes you have to counter, sometimes you can do something else. Um, what what I really like uh, is something they actually added in Arkham City is after you get to an eight times combo, everything starts to slow down, um, mm -hmm. uh, and it gives you a little bit more thinking time. Um, like I said, playing this most recently at sixty frames per second, that was fucking was pretty sweet because <laughs> you it goes by so fast and it feels so good. Um, and like you like you were saying, I think. The thing that I took away most was um, what this game definitely has over a Spider-Man is this incorp Batman incorporates the use of his gadgets a lot more than the Spider-Man game does. Like being able to grapple guys and pull them closer to you and then throwing the batarangs and things like that. Um, I think it does that very, very well. Yeah. Mm. And towards this point, I started getting back into the Batman mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and I started remembering that circle isn't dodge, but it's cape. That was the main thing that I was having trouble with just because I had played so much Spider-Man before this was like, I kept wanting to dodge with circle, but it was the cape. So I kept getting hit. Yeah. But the That's combat I think is still very, very strong in Batman. Um, it's more gadget driven i want to say like incorporating your batarangs and your grapples into your combos um and your strings yeah i mm -hmm. like and i know there are gadgets in spider-man but it's all like the web-based gadgets it's a little bit different. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. i was going to say because I I, I I like i think the opposite i think the way spider-man uh, allows you to just throw in gadgets uh yeah I thought I liked it a lot. Again, this is coming mm -hmm. from at that point. I did not go back to play the final part of Batman, mm -hmm. so I was still in the mentality: Batman combat's the worst. I'm so glad Insomniac finally fixed it. Can't believe it only took like <laughs> five fucking years for someone to figure. Oh, this sucks ass. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> it, it's very. It, it's. I think. Uh, I think Batman combat. You can again. You can mush your way through it. It's not gonna feel great. But Spider Man will just wreck your shit if you don't play by its rules and yeah. try to <laughs> innovate. Yeah. And um, like, I, Batman certainly gets there by Arkham Knight. Um, and <laughs> I, I'd, I'd just be curious if, like, if I've changed your perspective on it, George, how you feel about the innovations that City makes to combat specifically. I know you're never going to go back and play it, but it does a lot of. Uh, I think now with this perspective, again, it's so simple. It's such a simple, you just the way you frame it, the way you look at it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Okay, because a big problem for me was like I played Asylum and I went right to City, and at that point I was like, "Man, this combat is just like." Here's oh. like, the thing: is like City introduces that thing where thin it slows down time, but also introduces like gadget takedowns. Um, yeah. So like, if you hit the five times or eight times combo, you can use one of your gadgets as a power gadget in City. Um, so like he has like that electric pulse that he'll shoot, and it'll like spread out and hit multiple guys or battering will actually like fully take down a dude or the bat claw will do like a bat claw mm -hmm. take down or you can actually do a quick takedown in mid combat with the explosive gel like everything is mapped to a different face button mixed with like l2 or r2 uh and it feels really great and it that's what i mean like when i say like or when i agree with you scott that like batman comics mm -hmm. are a lot more gadget driven like they really get into that later where it's like again spider-man is all the kind of thrown gadgets, um, but but Batman has a, a little bit different set, different yeah. tool set. Um, so we get through this. Yeah. Now Next we go is, find poison ivy, right? Now we go. Yep. Find we have ivy. to. Yeah. We're back in. We've stopped the pumps. Titan's no longer flowing into the water supply. So we thank God head straight to the gardens again. <laughs> once again to f uh, to find ivy to inject her with the antidote to the Titan serum and. 
I told you to go back in your cell. Yeah. (laughs) The Titans or the uh, Gardens at this point are fairly straightforward, though I will Mm -hmm. admit it took me longer than I care to admit to find the little um, duct on the left side of the uh, room right when you enter the Gardens to progress. Yeah. Um, But it's pretty straight shot. There's not really any enemies. You do see some guards that are possessed by... Um, Ivy with her love toxin, so you had to kind of take those, take them down, break their and arms, and you get, yep, break their arms, <laughs> make them hurt a bit, and then you get those to the Ivy workers. Fight. They never did anything. <laughs> they yeah. deserve it. People talking about Spider-Man being a cop. <laughs> about Batman, so like that, yeah. Batman slinging yeah. cop bones left yeah. and right. <laughs> Pretty much. What did you guys think about the Ivy? Fight? It's the worst fight in this entire not, game. Yes, it's, it's so bad. Problems. <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved beating the guards off the edge. It was fun. Yeah. I, Super was, repetitive. It's just so bad. Uh, if there wasn't a checkpoint mid-fight, after you do the first explosive no. mm-hmm. gel round, I would have fucking been so furious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. Like, Say what you will about like the final, final Joker fight that we'll get into, but like, I thought this fight was so much worse. Um, yeah. And I... God, it's I was, so bad. I was getting horror flashbacks of like when I played through on hard mode to get the platinum, and it's so fucking miserable. <laughs> like, I can't even begin to tell you mm. guys. It was so miserable. Um, yeah. Like, so you. So Ivy has these three. Um, she's in one giant plant, and then there's these two plant tendrils, and then they spawn other like vines that can grab you and grab Batman, and then. You have to dodge those a bit, and then she gets... The tendrils get, like, turrets, and then they shoot at you, and then you have to throw a batarang to stun Ivy, and then you blast her with bat gel, and then do that, like, six or ten times it's, or whatever. And then, boom! Like you, you, you do the, the bat gel twice, but, like, it's it's as many times as it takes to get her, like, health bar down. Yeah, it, I don't yeah. know if you guys, like, you can hit her even when she has, like, the guard up. It'll still mm-hmm. do damage. It just don't won't do that much damage. I was just fucking chucking batarangs like the whole time. Yeah. Like, please make it stop. Please, God, yeah. make it stop. Yeah. It's yeah, a bad it's, boss fight. It's a bad it, boss fight. It, it was fairly repetitive. Um, like the only change to her repertoire was she would spawn the um, vines a bit quicker to grab Batman. But outside of that, it was pretty much just dodge, dodge, and then chuck batarangs. So it wasn't that strange. One thing that I thought was very strange, so, like, you use the explosive gel the second time, and then she goes down, but I don't remember ever seeing Batman use the cure on Ivy. He doesn't. No, he says it's so. He, yeah, he's it on himself. Because he, he was going to make more, yeah. but then his shit got fucked up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He did, He does end up making more. Yeah. Um, Because everyone does get cured in the mm-hmm. end, but... Uh, yeah, he, he just he, doesn't use <laughs> except those janitors he killed or whatever. Yeah, except all those janitors that died. Rest in peace, bless up. Right. Um, <laughs> but uh, right. no, yeah, he he just knocks Ivy out and her vines like, go away. Whatevs. So once we knock out <laughs> a little bit of a Ivy, bottle, <laughs> don't use the antidote that we went there to use on her. Um, we see some fireworks off in the distance, and we hear Joker coming over the PA system, inviting Batman to. The party, the final so part. We, yep, the final, the yeah, final section. George, what did you, wait real quick? George, how did you feel about Poison Ivy as a boss fight, as a sexually um, driven character? Uh, I mean, it's not a very horny boss fight. That's what you're saying. <laughs> There's a lot of vines grabbing people. Uh, it's pretty horny it's, depending on who you ask. Honestly, <laughs> true. honestly, it's like she's thirsty. <laughs> it's kind of a bummer. Like they don't do much with her in this game. Uh, I and I don't remember. Is she in? She doesn't have a prominent role in She's, City. Does she, she is like part of the Catwoman subquest in City. Uh, okay, it's yeah, Arkham Knight where she gets like. I think just. For, like, I think I remember. I was just bummed uh, the way they used her. I just wanted a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's not great. I don't have anything very rich to say. I think I remember back in the day when I was playing it. I don't remember being that frustrated as much as I was this time. Uh, but I was just mostly like, well, actually, I I do think. This boss fight only makes because you might be right, Alex. I think the last boss fight is better than this one, but they're so close together, yeah. And there's so much fighting in between that I just <laughs> like, oh man, this is a lot. Yeah, it's it's weird that they're back to back. I think the clear intention was like 
Joker invites you out, and then like you kind of have finally have free reign to explore the island, and you can get right. Some of the mm-hmm. Right. Right. You're right. Um, so I think they would hope that you would go around. To yeah, that because it's you. Only then do you finally have all of Batman's tools, and Poison Ivy's vines aren't uh, corrupting the island. Yeah. Uh, so you can finally get access to everything. That's a good um, point. So I think there is definitely creator's intent of like, all right, everyone explore now. But there's also like the, I really want to see the end of this story. And right. Yeah, mm-hmm. the fireworks are going off and all these dudes are out here. Um, I like the big Joker sign. The big Yeah, Joker I sign. love how all the, like the, the, mouth, the goons yep. have like mm-hmm. crowns and masks and they're like clapping it's for really Batman, good. like inviting him to a party. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the guy shows you... Cool the the clipboard with the list on it it just has mm. batman written over all the words on it <laughs> super dumb um but, but yeah do you guys beat up all the dudes no uh, i what i did what, the fun thing to do is set up explosive jail on the hallway and just blow it all up they go <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome then you gotta fight him i beat up all the dudes you get an achievement for it and a trophy for it so oh yeah yeah i'll have to go back and do that i just was like i'm I'm done at this point. I just yeah, at that point, that's true. I think yeah, we, were, just, we were like just... on a tight schedule to try to get this done. So um, then we uh, then we do. You the go thing. into that room and it uh, shifts to first person perspective. Yep. And you see Joker with his TV head, and then it explodes, and Batman's all like, "Oh, I'm Batman." <laughs> he does that. You know <laughs> he says funny. he says that exactly. What's that's that a quote? Is if you walk like I walked away from the the the, the, the like the, the window because I knew it would explode. You walk like all the way into the back of the room, then as soon as it explodes, it literally just teleports you right in front of it. I'm like, that sure. Yep. Video game. <laughs> yeah. Video game. Video game logic. Uh, well, so, Batman had to be stunned from the explosion, guys. Come on. Yeah. And yeah. so we don't fight Joker immediately. Still, we still. No, got, because we get into the. We get into his like lair, and we had to take out some uh, some more goons and some more Titan goons, and arguably the worst fight of the game. Yeah, it's like really. Great. I thought this one was fun. I didn't think it was that bad. I think I mean, it's just it was... bad because for me, it was just like, just, please, just put me out of my misery, for <laughs> the love of God. I like it's it's the only fight I guess where you fight two Titan goons at the same time with other guys. Um, mm-hmm. What was fun was I like I kept just shooting the back wall for fun and pulling guys down from the top part <laughs> before they were supposed to jump <laughs> down and they would just come down and get KO'd. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Again, like I, I didn't have too much trouble fighting the Titan guys. Um, yeah, I, I had a good rhythm of it at that point. Yeah. So you take down the Titan goons and the normal goons, and then Gordon or Joker reveals that he has Gordon like strapped to a chain and. He goes to shoot. He has a magic like dart gun filled with Titan serum. So he goes to shoot Gordon with the Titan dart, and yeah. Batman heroically jumps into the line of fire and takes the Titan serum dart, which he, which Joker knew he would do. Also, yeah, yeah. Um, and then Joker shoots himself with the Titan dart. And well, so- Batman just randomly because Batman can, he resists changing into the crazed titan yeah hell yeah dude batman's like his, fucking jacked his guys his arm like jacks and like just he grows his arm and jerks like, itself off. batman i go do that yeah but then he shoots himself so yeah but yeah. like i because I, I had a conversation with about this ending with Jarrett green uh editor mm. of ip uh and he just had like a really great perspective of it of like this whole thing is uh joker all he wants to do this whole time is like have Batman go Titan and have him go Titan and then to fight. Like yeah. that's yeah. Yeah, that's that a good is, point. That has been so his childish. plan the whole time. It is so mm-hmm. childish, yeah. and he just doesn't expect Batman to use the cure on himself. And it's so mm-hmm. out of the blue. And it's such. Mm-hmm. It is like a genuine moment of him when he starts laughing at that because he thinks it's so ridiculous. Um, it is. It is a cool Batman moment if you look at oh, it yeah. from that perspective of like. Batman just fucked this dude's plan that he's been working on right. this whole game, and now he's just pissed, but thinks it's hilarious because he's crazy. I just, I do really appreciate that. That's a good point. Respect. It's very much like, like you and I, like we're destined forever, and you pretty. It's pretty much an elaborate Valentine's Day fucking yeah. date setup. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and then it doesn't go as Joker hope. Yeah. No. Then but we Joker, get, so, so we got to talk about Lover Joker. <laughs> Joker. Turns into Titan Joker. Oh, man. I don't know why he can retain all of his, like, intelligence facilities yeah. and can speak normally. I love and it, though. everything with Joker. His design, though, was freaky. Like It's great. I love the... The design. artist who designed Titan Joker oh, was... Oh, man. Y'all guys are on something this. It's so bad. bad. I forgot how bad it is. It's bad. It's awesome. I love bad. I love the long nails. I love the fucking weird elbow spikes. Mm. I love the rib. How did he get a mohawk? I love the mohawk. It's just Mm. ridiculous. It's not good. Uh, It's so bad. I I would have such a hard time being like. It's a good thing they like up to this point. They're like, we fucking love Batman so much. Look at our scarecrow scenes. Look at this. And it's like, all right, so this is what we're doing to Joker. Uh, We're gonna make (laughs) him like a Mad Max guy. I don't fucking know. We gotta end this thing. It is like the most like. It feels like somebody. Final boss. Somebody put this in that did not work on the development team. I feel like they would have wanted to do something different. I think, like, I do genuinely think, like, artistically, the the design of the Joker is like gross and crazy. Yeah, yeah, totally. And cool, like, and and I think I think it looks rad. I I I think somebody had like a lot of fun making it. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I think it looks probably cooler on paper. On paper, it probably looks a lot cooler. Yeah. Um, when when translation translated into Unreal Engine four, maybe less yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh man, look at what we can do with the Unreal Engine, folks. Look at how gooey he looks. Look at but that. yeah, again, yeah. like mm-hmm. I I this was the first time I played it after hearing like kind of Jareth's take on it, and I I just had fun with it. It's pretty. Sh- it was like a lot shorter than I remember it being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's not as bad as a Poison Ivy fight. You just like avoid his attacks, punch some dudes, and then pull them down and punch them. Um, that was that was disappointing to me. Like you don't, I feel like you never fought the Joker. Yeah, yeah. you just fought goons. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's also kind of anti plan Like it, it's just like, it's it, in some ways, it does feel like mm-hmm. you run Joker's plan because like, fucking. All right, let's. Ah, shit. All right, let this. Let's just see <laughs> all right, this is so much less cool than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the Joker feels that too, and you, and you kind of feel it. I don't know. Like I. You know, it, it's inoffensive, but it's so anticlimactic. I, I think that's like oh my where I fall on it. Like, yeah. it just, it just is so. It's just another fight, you know. Yeah. Whereas, like, even the Ivy and Bane fights are like different. And like I said mm-hmm. about Croc, like it is so different. This yeah. isn't that different. Yeah. No, it's not different at all. I mean, you literally just punch some dudes, like just normal goons at bad. And then J- Joker will, you'll pull Joker down, punch him three times, and then it causes a cutscene, and then he jumps back and swipes at you three times, mm-hmm. and then you have to fight another round of goons. Like yeah. it's just, there's nothing special about this fight. Yeah. It has a great finish though. Oh. Yeah, the oh, yeah. ending cutscene is great, but it's so it's speaking like, of explosive gel. Yeah, it's yeah. I don't know this whole, it's very Bioshock esque. You know? Yes, it's very much that era. Like yeah. we gotta end this game. No, it's just like it we, I guess we gotta put a final boss in this. And it's just two know. years after Bioshock. Like I would bet that Bioshock had some level of influence on this game. It's got audio yeah. diaries, the way it's laid right. out, the the way they do environmental storytelling. Shout out to Immersive Sims, y'all. Yeah, it's just. I don't know, man. It's but a... then it's all that we get. What if you fought at the Atlas Shrugged guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Uh, what if you fought Super Joker? Uh, and like, yeah, I think like that is, I don't know. For me, that's the only, the part where they it felt like, oh, they made a video game out of a Batman property, uh, not out of. They made a fucking video game out of Batman. Yeah, uh, it's it it, so, mm-hmm. everything yeah. else is such a good meshing of video game mechanics and Batman that when you get here and it's like. All video game and no Batman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but you get a cool cutscene. He fucking puts explosive gel yeah. on his fist and punches the Joker. Uh, George that, is happy. I, I remember cool. being blown away and thinking that was the coolest shit ever. I forgot about that. So when, when I, I first again, played it, I was and like, it still yeah. was so badass. What does he say? It. What does he say before know. he does it? Doesn't he say something before? Like, something, like I think like, he probably says like, "You'll never win." 
or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's good enough. It's very fucking action movie. It's really cool. Cliche superhero last line. It's, it's awesome. really cool, though. He fucking because dis- Batman doesn't have a lot of those moments because he's just outwitting people. And this one's yeah. like, nah, fuck this shit. It's still been a long night. <laughs> it's been a long night. I'm pissed yeah. off. Boom. And he I like breaks his arm. His like arm. He's like holding his arm. Is fucking yeah. clearly broken at the end. Yeah. But he's it's like, cool. I don't give a shit. Yeah. But thus rolls the ending credits. Joker has been foiled, and he gets wheeled out, untitanified for some somehow. You did it again. Um, all the Titan people Batman. turn back. They say they turn back to normal. So, um, and, oh, okay. And I, I, I assume uh, Batman's produced cure from the back computer is is probably involved in some way. So, probably. Um, but yeah, then uh, I like the moment where like Gordon shows up. And he's like, "All right, you fucking do a good job." And he's like, "Just zooms off in the Batwing yeah. to go mm-hmm. get uh, Two Face." <laughs> oh, that yeah, Two Face is like the APB on Two Face, like blowing up a house or something robbing a bank like, i believe oh, it's only like four in the morning i still got like three hours to go yeah. so I'm gonna go it's really cool it's it cool. feels like a comic book like a, a comic book mm-hmm. series like it's just like here's the thing mm-hmm. it, 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 it's it's really well done who um, did you um the so the, well. the post credit scene is somebody's arm coming in grabbing a titan canister who do y'all see bane I bane, bane. i saw a uh, scarecrow it's either croc bane or scarecrow at the end yeah. fun fact Yep, I got I got Croc the first time I played the game. Yeah, I got Croc the first time I played. I never seen Scarecrow do it though. Yeah, um, I wonder. I had like... Scarecrow first time I saw. Yeah, which oh, okay. is cool because like at that point I was pretty sure Scarecrow was dead. Obviously, he comes back in the third game, but um, or the fourth game depending. Um, but uh, I thought the that was third cool. game. Uh, <laughs> dude, Arkham Origins is a great video game. You probably haven't even played it, Quinn. I have. I have actually. I started it and I just couldn't get into it. It's great. Um, if I can't get past a, a boss fight in that game, yeah, I'm good. What fight did you get stuck on? I'm pretty sure we discussed this last time. Deathstroke. Death Deathstroke. Deathstroke. Oh, yeah. One of the best fights in all of Batman history. Batman Arkham but history. Yeah, busted. And then our and then WB is like, they won't pay us to do it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I can't get past it, my brother can't get past it. Then there's something fucking wrong. Uh, yeah, you gotta get good at video games. Get hey, good, scrub. Hey. All right, time to hand in my resignation. <laughs> I'm bad. I'm calling it. Uh, no. So That's what do Batman. you what do you guys think about Batman? But yeah, what closing thoughts, Quinn? How Batman. do you feel about it? What? Who? Quinn? Because yeah, you, how do you? Feel? I feel like you held this in the highest regard of all of us. You were a baby when you played this game. I don't know. It's weird coming back to play this game because. Because I I really did love this game when it came out, but playing it now it's like it's I don't like how clunky it is. Um, I don't know. I like the world. I like the stealth sec- stealth sections, but I don't like being Batman and punching dudes. That's never been my thing. Like mm-hmm. I never like those segments. To me, Batman is like the stealthy guy, the quiet. Like he broods and he always has a plan instead of I'm gonna just punch fifty dudes. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. No. Punches people. It's fucking. It's a good ass punch. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good punch. punch yeah, it probably good. hurts. I like. I Brandon Jones from Easy Allies had like he described the Rocksteady interpretation of Batman as like a linebacker Batman, yeah. um, which <laughs> which I really good. like because he is like while he is still smart and a detective and brilliant yeah. and all that, like he also gets gets in with right. the fisticuffs a mm-hmm. lot more. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I like that. I like that. That is like one interpretation of Batman, and I think they do just they do right by that their interpretation of that. He like yeah. walks. He yeah. he well, he puts his money where his mouth is more than like like Christian Bale like has the <gasps> the linebacker voice, like, yeah. but yeah. he's not that like a total big. Jack. And this one has the knowledge of a Batman, but yeah. kind of lives up to that fucking Christian Bale voice. Like I'm a fucking muscle bound nightmare <laughs> i'm going to yeah. destroy you and i love that man that's good sky i want to know why christian bale never like when he was by himself talking to alfred why he stayed in the batman voice yeah, yeah. i don't know i want to know why christian bale thought that voice was a good idea at any point at any time good point seriously it's, it's very so good. bad it's very, so it's bad great i'm just talking about man that's <laughs> um scott what did you how did you feel about it I I still coming back to it. I did certainly have a good time with it. Um, it was much more Metroidvania y than I remember it being. Mm-hmm. Um, 
just going back and exploring things along those lines. I did have a very good time. Um, combat, while a bit slower, I thought it was a bit more metho- methodical, mm-hmm. um, where you kind of had to think about things and take things a bit slower than other games. In a, what I did enjoy, though, is seeing how it kind of, where things started, because a lot of action games grew from what the Arkham Asylum did. And kind of just going back to the beginning and really exploring and seeing what they initially did. Um, the story, I thought, was still very, very good. Um, the boss fights, I definitely think, are the weakest parts of this game. Um, compared to kind of the prayer rooms and the stalking and the story, um, bosses definitely left a lot to be desired, in my opinion. But I still had a very, very good time with it. I'm glad we ended up replaying it um, for the first game in Video Game Book Club. And um, But yeah, I had a good time. Yeah. I, I, I definitely had a good time. Um, George, what about you? Uh, so yeah, I definitely uh, feel the same way. I'm glad we replayed this because, uh, I, I came in, I have, I have some beef with Batman, with the uh, Rocksteady games. Uh, I well, never been that big of a fan of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, well, I remember liking Arkham Asylum, but when we signed this up, I was like, I wonder if that game is as good as I remember it being. And I, I remember that first episode being like so over the moon and so happy that this was the first game we 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 chose because like yeah this game holds up it is mm-hmm. crazy to see how this one licensed game published by Eidos made by the people who made Urban Chaos how they would yeah. write what video <laughs> games would be for the next years and still are in 2018 yeah, yeah. Uh, it is I, I just have so many questions like how like. What were the brainstorm sessions? Because they are so passionate and they have the talent to execute mm-hmm. on that passion. Uh, like so many, like this is AAA development during the early eras of the PS3 360 generation, where things are the budgets are so expensive, the housing crisis is just around the corner, and people don't want to take risks anymore. Uh, yeah. And how they were able to take so many risks and. I would be like, well, good luck, guys, with those scarecrow mm-hmm. sections. That sounds fucking wild. And they <laughs> nail it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I walked out from this third part getting that appreciation for that Batman combat, having this conversation with you guys. Mm-hmm. I feel a lot more positive about it. And I think I wouldn't go back to Arkham City, but Arkham Origins sounds very attractive. Yes. Uh, so good. That man. one sounds very oh, man. Um, But put, yeah, put I, I feel book really glad. Right? I think by the end... I was sort of tired of the combat. Mm-hmm. Yes. But but yeah, I'm glad we did this because I, I feel so much more positive about Batman. Uh, I, I think I, I feel like I always have these moments. I think the last moment I had of this was like the Telltale series. Yeah. Uh, where I was like, man, fucking Batman is mm-hmm. good. When it's fucking good, it's, it's fucking it's good. Really good. Yeah, man. it's real good. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, uh, it, it holds up. I think, I don't know. I, I think at a certain point we'll hit a time like when you go back to watch aliens i i, I don't like aliens because like this mm. is just an action movie uh but we're still not so far removed from video games where we can look we can still see yeah. it and appreciate like oh man that's such a throwback but mm-hmm. i think there's gonna be a generation eventually uh, whatever fucking video games look like maybe everyone's just like well, this is important night what the fuck is this <laughs> uh but i think there will be a generation like this just seems like the most basic this is like fucking stone tablets like what is this <laughs> we can yeah. still appreciate like and see its influence like arkham asylum's influence on games today mm. yeah, yeah but I, I, when i see aliens i'm like you oh, know it's fucking oh, that's cool i yeah. guess yeah <laughs> i feel like we're version. the original aliens, thin, like an okay movie where the original thing has like less of a regard modern, yeah. modern. Yeah. right that. aliens is great one sir. it's good it's very <laughs> never good. seen it really alien is so much better I like yeah. Alien. I don't know, I like them both that? pretty equal. There's a lot of movies you guys would be su- incredibly surprised and shocked that I haven't seen. You know what? She hasn't seen The Dark Knight. Apparently, that's weird. No, apparently. I've seen Dark Knight. Okay, <laughs> I've seen Dark Knight. Honestly, but what about you, Alex? What I, do you think about Arkham Asylum? I it's it's weird because you know like it's one of those things. The last time I played this was in 2014, 2015. 
um, when I, I went, I was going through like the nighttime. Yeah. No, I actually, I didn't play Asylum back then. Um, last time I played this was when I got the Platinum then. Yeah, which was forever ago. Um, you know, Arkham Asylum was the first Platinum trophy I ever got, um, which oh, really? re- requires you to uh, p- do everything to play it on the hard difficulty to get all the Riddler stuff. Um, like, I've always had, like, a soft spot in my heart for this game because I love Super Metroid. Uh, it's one of my favorite mm-hmm. games ever. Um, and like you were kind of saying, George, just, like, they, they made that combat system and the way that those predator encounters play out, like they made that from literally nothing. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. no precursor mm-hmm. to the way Rocksteady approached the design of those two things. Um, but like so many video games use this yep. game as, as mm-hmm. their precursor. Like obviously shadow of war and shadow of Mordor are like yep. carbon copies of this game. Um, Spider-Man, um, like several attempts at like Marvel and DC games have like tried to to take or interpret this combat and stealth in their own way. Like it, the fact that this is a licensed game, one that it's as good a, of a licensed game as it is, two, and also that like it is also so true to a license that already exists, Batman the Animated Series, and yeah. mm-hmm. can like be considered by many of the fans of that as a continuation of that, that those kinds of characters or those interpretations of those characters and not like horribly offend so many people. Yeah. And uh, then they were trusted to do something that wasn't based on the movie because EA yeah. made a Batman begins game. Yeah. That, yeah. Truly really did. Um, and it's, it's just like all of the, the circumstances in which it came to be are incredible. Yeah. But I think like at the end of the day, like the game really does hold up in my opinion. Like I think the combat is still phenomenal. I think there's nothing quite like it like outside of the most carbon copy of it which is shadow of mordor and shadow of war yeah um i i I think like the combat just gets better through the sequels uh and i think like arkham knight's combat is like incredible i think it is like this combat perfected um Mm -hmm. and the way it feels and the fact that they had the opportunity to make three games and get there um and just yeah like it's the it's the things that I, I guess I thought about less that you really liked, George. Like those kind of stuck in the moment, like awestruck moments, um, that really stood out to me this time around. Like when you first walk out on the asylum, and you see mm-hmm. the Gotham City skyline, yeah. and uh, you see yeah. Wayne Tower, and it's like it really sinks in that you're just like at a point in a place at a time in this world, and this world is real and it's right in front of you, and it's it's a lot like Spider Man. Uh, 2018 in that regard because you were like you're jumping in years into this like yeah. shit's yeah. happened you have right. fought these guys this is not the first rodeo and it's not going to be the last um mm-hmm. and that like that just comes across in so many ways that are that range from subtle to not so subtle um and just like the the trip through the island through the different buildings through all of the different villain story arcs and everything is is just so good uh, and I know, like, it doesn't... It, obviously, the whole last act, I think, is really poor just in general, save mm-hmm. for the Killer Croc stuff, yeah. which I like that is how different it is. But, like, that middle act, like, everything about that section of the game is so yeah. fucking good. Like, it's so good. Like, the moment... From the moment you beat Bane, you go to the Batcave, and then you, you go the through the asylum. Yeah, you find the Bruja. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, like... All of those moments are so good. You fight Harley. You see like Mr. Freeze's cell. And it's just all those little world building things that you see from the first moment when you walk on the island to like when you're in like the deepest parts of the asylums. All like are still stand out mm-hmm. so much. Um, oh, so, yeah. yeah. I think it's it's phenomenal. I think it's like it is still a master class in its own regard. I don't mm-hmm. think it's perfect. Uh, I don't think it's like the 10 that we would all want it to be even for the time because of all the things it does wrong. But right. like, it also crescendoed into Arkham City, which is my favorite game in the franchise, and it's yeah, it's so good, and it's like yeah, they 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 kept making a thing, they kept learning, and we still don't know what they're making right now, and that's no. so yeah. that's so exciting. Oh, I know, it's they did Rocksteady and Batman Arkham Asylum did for like three D action kind of video games 
sort of what Nintendo did with Super Mario 64 in like 3D. Yeah, that's what I was games. thinking too. Or like even in a smaller sense, when you look at the mechanics, I, I even like something like Call of Duty Four mm-hmm. with yeah. sort mm-hmm. of the system that was around this time as well. Shooter, yeah, yeah I think like, those are probably the two big shifts that happened in the beginning of this generation. Yeah, like the way Call of Duty Four approached online, like leveling yep. and all that, like. Mm-hmm that's still felt today in the same way that a lot of Arkham Asylum's choices are. Mm-hmm. But he, this is so more ex- impressive because like that was nothing. Infinity War, they had the prestige. Yeah. And this mm-hmm. is like a licensed game made by people who made Urban Chaos, that PS2 game that came out in 2005. No mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it came from nothing and it like... Death Rose of Eidos. Yeah. Yeah. It's very much in regard as one of the best video games ever made. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just like, it's such a an underdog story in, in all the best ways. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Video games are good, actually. Man, <laughs> this was a good game. This was a good game. Yeah. It was fun playing it with Glad you guys. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Arkham Asylum is over and done with. Close the book. So I think it's time we announce what the next game in Video Game Book Club will be for October. So I'm going to send it over to our good pal Mike Burgess from Irrational Passions to let you guys know what we got cooking for the next game. Hey everyone, this is Mike Burgess with IrrationalPassions.com and I hope you enjoyed our first video game book club series. I'm sure the guys had a lot of fun playing through Batman Arkham Asylum, but that's old news. I'm here to announce the next game in our book club series for the month of October. Here it is. Attention. Stationwide emergency is in effect. All cells are ordered to evacuate. Move immediately to the nearest evacuate. Attention. A stationwide emergency is in effect. Bigger than the lives of everyone on this station. That's right, it's Dead Space 2. We'll be playing the first five chapters of the game for our first checkpoint, and I hope you'll join us for it by either playing along with us or just listening to us and hearing our thoughts. Dead Space Dead 2. Dead Space, wow. Whoa. Dead Space wow. 2 is our next wow. game. Seemed fitting because it's our October spooky Halloween title. So look forward to that. Jetpack month. Do we know yeah. everyone that's going to be on it? <laughs> no idea. Okay, I know you and me and Mike are going to be there. We might have more. Yes. We'll see. I think Jarrett I might Jarrett. said he might be interested. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we don't have a, a firm grasp yet, but we hope you will be there to play along with us with Dead Space 2. Dead Space I 2 myself, is so good, you guys. Be I've ready. never played any of the Dead Space games, so I'm looking forward to starting uh, to, to to trying it. So Take the George route, uh, find the PS3 version. I think that will happen. <laughs> yeah, I have it uh, downloaded on my PS3. Uh, get a free copy of Dead Space Extraction. It was on sale or at some point, so I bought the Dead Space trilogy. Um, one of those PlayStation Flash sales. I might, I might play it on PS3 as well. We'll see. So that's what I'll, that's what I'll be playing it on. But uh, oh, man, you guys gotta talk about the marketing campaign for Dead Space. I just thought oh, about yeah, that. Yeah, remember right like now. all the people playing it and like screaming. Oh yeah. man, your mom's good. afraid of that. Dead Space too. <laughs> Video games. <laughs> your, your girlfriend's afraid of. Oh, so, uh, so dumb. Uh, that'll be good. That'll be good. But everybody, George, Alex, Quinn, where can everybody find you on the interwebs? I want Quinn to go first. He's the youngest. Yeah. Thanks. Innocent yeah. young Quinn. He's not. Innocent. Where can we Don't find you? Call me that. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely not innocent. Absolutely. I'm going to call it. Myself I'm going to call you that because you get so bothered when I call you that. So it's true. Um, George, what the fuck? <laughs> Say where we're at so we can go to bed. <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitter at quantum underscore arbiter. I don't tweet much. Um, he doesn't. And he does it you. quietly yeah, under his I know. breath. Yeah, he really doesn't. Yeah. Um, I don't really use Twitter that much anyways. But 
Yeah. And then it's you're you're on you're on yeah. irrationalpatch.com. We all are. I guess that's a spoiler. Yeah. That is a yeah. website. Yeah. It's a website. Hashtag spoilers. George. Uh, folks can find me at jcruzalvarez26 or on a podcast which is called Input. It is an irrational. The star of podcast. Input. The star of uh, Input. The shining um, dwarf star of Input. <laughs> yeah. Uh, George, yeah, so you did. Um, sometime. Tell, tell us about your movie podcast. Um, the movies movie are cool. podcast. What? Okay. Yeah. Well, movies are real. So, motion Fresh pictures movie. are an exciting medium. <laughs> uh, someone finally decided to cover it, and that's me. We finally my... have talkies in 2018. <laughs> yes. That's true. It's really exciting. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. You, I don't know. I saw, was it A Quiet Place? Mm. You know, that movie's behind the times. I don't know what's up with that. That was pretty good. (laughs) I forgot the audio track or something. Uh, But yeah, I do a movie podcast called uh, Movies Are Real with uh, two close friends of mine. We talk about movies. We're we're very... uh, You know how, like, when Spider-Man came out, a bunch of people were complaining about these fucking games journalists and they're well, actually, Spider-Cop fucking... (laughs) We're the people who don't like any Marvel <laughs> movies. So we don't. We, yeah, yeah. We're not fun. Uh, but, so you're awful, and everyone yeah. should listen to that podcast. Listen, movies are real. I is made, a good I podcast made, that people need I'm to listen sold. to. Agreed. Sold on it. This is the year I think I made the most apologies. Like, listen, I I, I don't want to hate everything. I promise you. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, it's uh, it's fine. To all the boys I loved before, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. all fine. As long as it's fine. Cool. Is that on YouTube? That's not, uh, it's on podcast services, so you can just find it on iTunes, on Google Play, on SoundCloud, and on YouTube. Hell yeah. Good stuff. And what about you, Alex? Where can we find you? Uh, I'm at alfighter 27 on Twitter. Um, I tweet a lot, so I'll make up for the rest of everyone. Usually it's about... it's <laughs> George tweets more than I do. I tweet the most out of everyone. That's it's not true. Lie. George tweet Because George tweets for like 12 different Twitter accounts. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. It is he tweets true. for IP. He tweets for himself. He tweets for movies that are real. He's all over it. Um, someone keeps ringing my doorbell, and I don't know what's happening to like go behind the <laughs> curtain a little bit. <laughs> uh, it's twelve twenty nine a.m. right now, for reference. Yeah, oh god, um, that just probably upset with me. I uh, I do a bunch of stuff on the internet. Uh, I don't know, rationalpatch.com. That's like the best place to see it. Um, but if you see me tweeting at four o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time, it's probably about Kingdom Hearts, and I'm probably crying. But thank you, everybody, for stopping in for the first episode or the first game of Video Game Book Club. This has been Batman Arkham Asylum with Irrational Passions Video Game Book Club. I want to say a huge thank you to Mr. Quinn, Alex, and George for being the first guests and the first players in this new series. We hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to Dead Space 2 for our next game, and we'll see you all next time. Bye.